rabbit hole of lessons that I've gotten from very, very rich clients. And what that means is that in the process of me working one-on-one -on -one with a lot of very, very wealthy people, I have not only taught them how to hit the next level in areas that I'm good at, but I've actually had the privilege of learning from them by coaching them. And I can clearly see the difference between somebody who becomes a multimillionaire or gets into a couple hundred million or gets to even in excess of a billion dollar net worth and somebody who's making maybe 30,000 a year or 100 grand a year or a million a year. And when you're thinking like this, you're getting into a completely and utterly different paradigm. And that's the kind of paradigm that it is that I'm gonna be looking to share with you here today. Now, in the previous video, I talked a lot about getting a high ROI on your time, recognizing that you're gonna die and how to enjoy life. So it was a really, really in-depth video about how to really, really enjoy your life. So if you're somebody who's like, look, I don't care about just banking, 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 I wanna enjoy life, we've covered that now for about an hour and 20 minutes in the previous video, and now I'm just gonna talk about how to get the cash, <laughs> okay? So that's been covered, and I wanna to talk to you about making money, banking cash, um, getting really, really good social skills results, building an exact life that it is that you want, by putting an emphasis on valuing your time and getting a very, very high ROI from the moves that you make. And we're gonna be framing life a little bit like a video game here, and this is gonna be how to master the video game of life so that you can have an expanded and beautiful ascendant experience, okay? So we're gonna go very, very deep on this. Now, if you like what it is that I'm teaching you here, by the way, the best place to go much, much deeper is right here, www.blueprintreloaded.com. I called it the Blueprint Reloaded as a nod to the original Blueprint Decoded, which took me half a decade to create. This one here also took me about half a decade. This was my very, very expensive seminar that I taught live, often for about five grand, um, combined with a mentoring that I was doing for I think about 3,700 bucks. And I've literally just packaged that together in this program. It's inexpensive. Get in here. It runs about, it's something like 80 hours, has coaching in it, interaction with me. Um, there's coaching every single day. And um, there's uh, accountability groups. I mean, if you put a gun to your head and said, invent the ultimate program that is likely to get a result, this was what you'd come up with. It was like 20 years of teaching, best program you could ever make, accountability, masterminds, real life interaction, access to me, access to the team, all that kind of stuff. And you wanted that on the topic of making money, OG social skills, very raw, how to get spiritually tapped in, how to heal yourself, how to be happy, how to build an amazing life, how to be super, super, super motivated. It's all right in here exercise oriented, not just watching content. You've got to watch it. You've got to do the exercises within the group, get accountability. Best thing I put out in many, many years, okay? Blueprint Decoded was around 2008. Hot Seat at Home was 2016. This was something I put out now in 2024. So this is the program that is next in that list of the ones that were major, major, cost tons of money to produce, put it together, months to edit. It's all right in here. It's all out now. It's incredible. And if you get in here right now, guess what happens? You get inside the group. And by the way, at some point, we're gonna be pulling away that group. And so what's gonna wind up happening is you're gonna miss a lot of the very, very important phone calls, okay? A huge amount of this is, is the value that's in the group itself. So you gotta get in there or you're gonna miss the phone calls and also the price will go up at some point. So make sure that you get in here right now as soon as you can, okay? Otherwise, life will be what it is, okay? Last point about this is that if you don't get at least double your current understanding, in watching this, refund the fucking thing, but my goal is to get you 10 times the result. I almost called it the 10X blueprint for that reason. Um, Grant Cardone kind of coined 10X, but the point being, get inside here, okay? Um, my goal is to get you about 10 times the result. It'll be the best thing you watch. Now, in saying this, let's talk money. And let's talk about also how to even run your social life in a way that maximizes ROI. Okay, so the basic way that you want to think about it is that you're sitting here and I don't know, on average, probably everyone watching this is make, making maybe 80 to 220 K or something like that, right? If you're making less than that, you're fucking up super bad. But let's say that on average, the average person that's watching self-help content is a little bit further down the road, a little bit more innovative and clever. So maybe you're making 80 to 220 K and you're saying to yourself, well, how do I get past that? How do I use my time in such a way that I get past that? What are some core understandings that let you play the game a little bit differently? Or let's say that your dating life is like, it's okay. You know, you're dating people that are 
okay. Or maybe you're not even dating anybody and you're just sitting there just wanking it all day or doing some celibacy quest or whatever, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, but whatever the case. And, and you're like, well, how do you date better people? Like, how, how does that actually happen? And what I want to talk about is like, how does this actually happen? Like, how does this become this thing that we're, how do we transition from talking about it? Like, let's talk about it. Like, let's watch another video and setting a standard where this is just your life. And this will be the best kind of thinking that you could possibly have to get there. But it's up to you if you want to listen to the fucking thing or not. Like, that, at the end of the day, is up to you. Okay? Do you want to listen? Do you not? It's up to you. Do what you want. I've personally driven over $100 million in sales, but I've also coached people that are in the billions of dollars in personal net worth, and I will show you the kind of understandings they have. So like I mentioned in the previous video where I laid into this, the biggest thing that I noticed was value for time and a focus on impact and ROI on that time. So you've gotta be very, very clear in what it is that you're trying to create. What exactly are you trying to create? So the first thing that I'd recommend to you is I would like you to determine exactly what it is that you want from a non-retard, although I do always say go full retard, but from a non-retard at a non-ego-based perspective and something that you're willing to pay the price to get. So in other words, if I say to you how much money that you wanna make and you tell me billionaire, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions. I'm gonna say, like, okay, say that I say to you right now, how much money do you wanna make? And you say a billion dollars. Here's what I'm gonna say to you. I'm gonna say, well, like, we'll take for example that you live in LA. Okay, you wanna be a billionaire. Have you ever taken a boat to Catalina Island? Oh, no. Have you ever driven out to Sequoia National Park three hours outside of LA? Oh, no. Do you ever go to Joshua Tree? Do you ever go to Coachella? Oh, no. Do you ever go boating out in the ocean here and fishing? Oh, no. Do you ever go skiing at Big Bear two hours away from here? Oh, no. Do you ever go to the Getty or the Griffith Observatory? Oh, no. So you don't wanna be a billionaire. Yeah, I do. No, you don't, because you don't even have a taste for things that are expensive. See, you have to understand, you are already a billionaire right now. You have access to billions of dollars in infrastructure that a king or queen didn't have access to a couple hundred years ago. You already have access to that. So if you're telling me that you, you have a, a taste to be a billionaire, you're fucking lying, because you, you, you're already a billionaire and not even using the fucking infrastructure. So what I want you to do is for the next month, I'm gonna tell you to do something that will be completely and utterly cheap or for free, and here's what it is. What I want you to do is I want you to write down a list of every single awesome thing there is to do in your city that is either free or you know like 100 or 200 bucks or something like that. What is that in your city? And I want you to go deep on this. now. You want to test me on this? You fucking test me, okay? You see me at a free tour or something? You see me on the street and I have a time to talk if I had a bit of time? Test me on this. Name a city, any city that I would ever go to, and I've been to most of them. I could tell you the top 20 restaurants. I could tell you where the spas are. I could tell you the best outdoor stuff. I could tell you where the girls are, where the nightclubs are. I could tell you the best views. I can tell you the gems of that city. So every single city that I've gone to, what I'm proud of is that I've gone out of my way to actually enjoy the fucking thing, okay? So, you know, like if you're going to Seattle, are you gonna drop the 200 bucks to take the fucking seaplane? Like the seaplanes in Seattle are the shit. Are you gonna go to Olympic National Park just outside Seattle? Are you gonna go to Mount Rainier just outside Seattle? Are you gonna go to Cascade National Park just outside Seattle? Are you going to go to the, um, to the islands, the San Juan Islands? just outside Seattle. You're gonna hit up the Space Needle. Are you gonna hit up the different neighborhoods, the different farm, to what are the names of the different farm to table restaurants that you wanna go to? What are the really posh neighborhoods that you wanna go to? Where's there to go out? Are you gonna go see the Fremont Troll, which is hilarious, right? And so on and so forth, right? You know, the, the seaplanes in Seattle are amazing. It's like these little seaplanes, literally you just zoom up and you go over like Bill Gates' house and all this different stuff. You, you do a little tour of the city, you drive right by the Space Needle, a couple hundred bucks. Like, why haven't you done this? It's, it's, so, it's so cheap, it's borderline free. A king or queen could not have done that a couple hundred years ago, and you're just sea planning around the fucking city. It's insanity, okay? You've got Portland just south of you. Portland has, uh, it's, it's, it's right in proximity of, of Cannon Beach, the coolest um, beach town on the entire uh, northwest uh, coast of the ocean. 
you've you've got uh, Mount Hood, which has like these incredible fucking like like castle type resorts that were built during the Depression with Mount Hood on it. You've got uh, Crater Lake, which is a giant volcano a little bit south. You've got Tomalik Blue Pool. Um, you've got the Oregon Coast. Um, Portland itself has also incredible farm-to-table restaurants. It's got Soma Kombucha, which is the best kombucha place that you could go to. I also am not a fan of the far left and communism, but they actually have communist rallies that I think are just fucking hilarious and unintentionally funny. You can actually see this downtown and so on and fucking so forth, okay? And I could just talk for hours and hours and hours about this. So if that's the case and, you know, you're in a given city, I don't care where you go. Get the fucking value out of the fucking thing. Okay, milk it. Milk the fucking city for the fucking value that it has. Again, tons of free stuff, but also paid stuff. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to prove to me that you want to be rich. Prove to me that you have a joy for life. Prove to me that you want to spend the money on something. Otherwise, what the fuck are you even talking about? You don't even want to spend the fucking money. What I want you to do again, is write down a list of where you live. I don't care if it's Europe, Australia, Africa, wherever the fuck it is. Write down a giant list of every single awesome thing in your city. The parks, the museums, the art galleries, the beautiful views, the unique buildings, um, the, uh, the stuff on the outskirts of the city, the nature on the outskirts of the city, ski resorts, boating, whatever it is that you want to do, tell me what is unique in that city. And I can tell you this too. When I lived in Hawaii, the best shit was like bodyboarding surfing. If you go to the Greek islands like Mykonos Santorini, it's better to drive around the island on a fucking moped, okay? You try to go bodyboarding in, in uh, Mykonos and there's not a lot of waves there and the beaches are often gravel. Um, so maybe you go mopeding, uh, which is so much fun in Mykonos to go do that. Conversely, in, um, in Hawaii, you'd probably wanna go surfing or something like that. You see my point, right? Each area has a strong suit. So don't, just, don't try to replicate a strong suit that may not exist in the place that you're from. <clears throat> okay, great. Very cool. Now, from there, as you go do this list, what you're going to be doing is showing that you value your fucking time because here's what you're going to experience when you go and you do this. The first thing that you're going to find is, and this is kind of hilarious to think about, you probably don't even have the mental focus to even write a list of fun shit. And that's pretty fucked up. You literally don't even have the mental focus to focus on all the fun things that you even wanna do. You're literally gonna start looking at other YouTube videos, you're gonna click off of this one, and you're just gonna go and do that. And so that's gonna show you the first level challenge, like the ability to even focus yourself for two or three hours and do a little bit of fucking research, wow. So just seeing that as an impediment, that's gonna be impediment numero uno, okay? This will, this will start, because by the way, I'm not just having you do this to get a taste for fun stuff. I'm also doing it to show you the flaws in your game. I'm trying to show you where you're gonna fuck up. And it's gonna expose a lot. It's like, it's like taking a, a new canoe that you built and putting it in the water and you're gonna see where the holes are. This is gonna show you where the holes are. Number two, what you're gonna see is that you don't even have time to go do any of this stuff. The next two to three months are gonna be riddled with disappointment as every single weekend you're like, oh, I'm gonna go to the art gallery and you don't do it. You literally just don't even do it. It's, isn't that crazy? You just watch these stupid ass videos and you don't even do shit. You just don't get in the habit of doing it. And your life's just passing you by as a battery in the matrix, basically just so a bunch of elites that are not even happy themselves can live out their miserable existence by getting you in a pimp-hole relationship with them, being the hoe in that, in that equation, you are the hoe, and just like how a pimp is just some dark, evil person who's miserable, and then the hoe is all fucked up, the, the people pimping you are fucked up and you're fucked up and it's just fucking fucked up. So you're gonna see that you don't even have time to do this. And I predict that it will take you 18 months to even knock down basic bucket list items that are free or local to you. And meanwhile, you think you wanna be a billionaire. Why? So you go do that. And what's gonna happen is, you know, work's gonna come up, relationships gonna come up, you're gonna have every excuse, Every single week you're gonna have an excuse. It's also partly spiritual, by the way. You can't even resonate highly enough to go do this. So that'll be your next thing that'll come up. So A, not even enough attention span to make the plan. B, unable to logistically make it happen. And from this, you're gonna see gaps in your attention span and you're going to see gaps in your planning and ability to execute even simple things like going to fucking park. The next thing that you're gonna see is that you're gonna start going to some of them. And you know what you're gonna have revealed to you that's hilarious? You don't even like it. Do you wanna know why a lot of people just smoke weed or just eat junk food or just look at the internet? Because they go do these things that are supposedly fun and they don't even like it that much. 
You think that you'd like it, you won't. You are not even trained to associate to that activity. Isn't that crazy? You don't even know how to go, I talked about this last video, you may not even know how to go skiing and get in a flow state from it. A lot of people even learning the dating stuff, they, they, they go out, go out, go out, go out, and they finally go home with somebody and they realize that they didn't even enjoy the physical intimacy that much. Like you've got to actually train your mind to enjoy intimacy and it is a little bit of an acquired taste. It does take time to get there, to connect with somebody else or to have an intimate experience with them. So lack of attention span, failure to even go see these things that are free, but you have an excuse, it's just next week. Right, fucking right, fucking liar. Okay, but you'll say, no, I'm not lying. Okay, and then the next one, even when you get there, you can't enjoy it. From there, the last one is even beginning to get a taste to where you resonate with doing awesome stuff. And so what I think that you're gonna find is that once you actually put in the real effort to start doing awesome stuff, you, you do start to get sort of a taste for it, okay? You start getting a taste for doing all these fun, awesome things, and all of a sudden, when you go to waste your time or smoke a joint or look at random social media or so on and so forth, you start looking at yourself and you say, this is not even getting me where it is that I wanna go. Like, I don't like this. I don't care about this. I don't enjoy this. This isn't really that much fun. I just wanna go do awesome stuff. And so what's gonna happen is, if you can get to the point where all of a sudden smoking weed and looking at the internet and wasting your time and eating junk food and gossiping and all this stuff gets drowned out and you start to resonate in your soul with just doing awesome stuff and just laughing and having fun and enjoying life, once you actually can purge the poison out of yourself and get to the point that you like this stuff, all of a sudden you do resonate with it. And then when a lot of things that are time wasting get put in front of you, you no longer resonate with that and you just wanna go do the awesome stuff. And now all of a sudden that person comes up to you and says, hey, um, look at this thing I afford, look at this TikTok I afford you, I'm good. Hey, let's gossip about this person, I'm good. Hey, let's complain, I'm good. Hey, let's go, let's watch this dumb TV show, I'm good. I just wanna go do awesome shit. So you'll begin to shift what you resonate with to where you just wanna go do awesome shit. Now, once you wanna go do awesome shit, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get a taste for it. And in my view, it's almost divine perfection in some ways, but really it's just the way society's laid out. But in some ways, it's kind of divine perfection, it feels like it, to where in the 18 months to maybe two and a half years that it takes you to knock down all of the cool local stuff with a total laser-like focus on it, as that's kind of evolving, you start to get a taste for it and then maybe look at, I don't know, my videos or travel videos or a movie or whatever you start looking at and you're like, I'm kind of running out of cool things to do here. I got a taste for some bigger, more badass things. I want to go do other things that are super badass. I don't want to just only do this. I want to do other cool things. I want to have other experiences. I want to broaden my horizons a little bit. So then what's going to start happening is you're going to start looking for ways to make money but see, the key here is now you're not lying. You're not lying. I wanna be a billionaire. Never went to Catalina Island. I wanna make trillions. Have a friend with a boat, never went on it. You're lying. It's this weird ephemeral, okay, nuance point here, super nuanced, but when you get this, a lot's gonna open up to you. The billionaire thing, millionaire thing, dating thing, success thing, is actually just a way to disassociate. These large goals are just ways to disassociate. They're ways to separate yourself from your happiness. Some of them are so big that they're unaccomplishable and so on and so forth. It's just some lying bullshit goal that lets you stay in this weird thing, right? Like people, people in self-help, they're always talking like, I want to impact a million people. I want to change the world. I want to have a global awakening. It's like, bro, let's go, go do a hike at Griffith. Okay, and then come back to me and we'll talk about this. It's like on, on our old trainings, you know, it was, it was always the guys that were the most disassociated that were like, how do I get a stripper? How do I get a threesome? And it's, it's like, it's always the threesome guy or the stripper guy who can't even go meet like some plain Jane regular person or even walk up with any confidence. It's like they make these crazy over the top goals that are certainly achievable if you know how, but they do that as a way to fail with the simple thing. So anytime that somebody says to me, I wanna be a billionaire, or they say to me that I'm gonna become a billionaire, I say, let's talk about how you're gonna make 30 grand, 60 grand, 90 grand, 120 grand, 200 grand. How are you gonna to go to the park, the boat, 
the national park, the skiing. Like, let's talk about stuff that's actually going to happen for real and let's be accountable to it. Knock down goals and then build focus and momentum um, in an increasing dose, okay? So, for example, you know, past year I wound up doing this big, huge, several months trip to Alaska or whatever it was. And, you know, I've got the hiking gear and the plan and the logistics and the savings and the airplanes booked and all that stuff. I didn't just start like that, right? You know, the start was like Runyon Canyon in Los Angeles, you know? And, you, and, you, and there's, there's a, a trajectory to it where you kind of become more and more of what you are, right? If you see old videos of me, maybe I had like a little bit of a beard and then the beard got a little crazier and a little crazier. Now I have the giant beard and so on and so forth, right? You know, maybe I had old free tour videos. They were nine minutes and then it becomes the three hour free tour video and so on and so forth. There's, there's a natural evolution. You know, the person gets their first tattoo, 10 years later, they got sleeves and the, and the whole thing, right? There's a, there's a trajectory to what it is that people are doing. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create the genesis of a little bit of a trajectory for you where it's like, you know, this future of you living life and balling out and all that, it, it has a seedling or sort of a genesis, a starting point, a, a point from, w- from which, you know, there's a tear in the veil and the infinite energy thro- flows out through it like a fount pushing out propelling you forward as sort of an ignition that you've got to push through all that gravity so that you can get past the gravity and just fly around through space effortlessly because you're out of that initial kind of weight that's holding you down, okay? So what's gonna happen is suddenly you want to do better stuff and you're naturally gonna have a taste for it. There's a taste that you have for it, right? Like for example, another trajectory, like first I got into doing a little bit of cold approach, a little bit of dating, that I did more, right? That was like in Kingston, Ontario, or Ottawa, Canada, right? Then it's like, oh, maybe a little trip to San Diego, a little trip to LA. Now I wanna go out in South Beach. Now I wanna go out in Europe. Now I wanna go out in Mykonos. Now I wanna go out in Australia, so, you know, so on and so forth. You know, now I wanna get better skills. Now I wanna meet new people. Now I wanna get meet even better people. Now I wanna keep building a skill set. Oh, now I come to LA. Maybe I get a mansion. Oh, I throw giant parties at the mansion. Oh, we throw mega parties. Oh, we've got tons of people here. Oh, now we're doing this all the time. Now we have pipelines, funnels, blah, 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 right? With seminars. Oh, we do a little seminar in a Starbucks. Then we do a seminar in a small hotel lobby. Then we do a seminar in a, in a, 30, per, a 30 person room. Then we have a thousand person seminar, right? You see where I'm going with this? There's a trajectory to it. So you want to start to begin to kind of initiate that trajectory you know, basically by showing your brain what it is that you want and where it is that you're going. And then what happens now, your brain starts backwards engineering how to produce the results so that you can get there, okay? But you gotta kind of throw your hat over the fence or burn the boats, as they say. You probably know, you probably heard that expression. Look it up if you haven't, burn the boats. Uh, But basically, you've gotta force yourself into these situations where you start to get a taste for actually having fun and wanting better for yourself. So now what happens is you're gonna see your friends back in your regular city and they're gonna be looking at all these distractions and whatnot, and you're like, I don't wanna do this. I don't care about this. I don't want your weed. I don't want your fucking mushrooms. I don't want your video game. I don't care about this bullshit, this gossip, complaining. I don't want to hear about your fucking ex. I just wanna to go to Alaska, right? Like, you kinda of just get to that point. And so, in doing so, now you're getting that point, and you're knocking things down. Now, you're serious. Now, you're in it for real. Now, you're playing for keeps. Look, it's the same thing with social skills. Someone's like, I'm building my social skills. I say, there's three ways that I know if you're serious. First of all, do you have a condom in your pocket? No, (laughs) then you're not serious. Second of all, let me see your social media. Is it built in a way that if somebody met you and they followed you on social, they could get an idea of who you are? No, like in a flattering way, no. Let me look at your house. Is your house laid out in a way that if you met someone, you brought them back, they'd feel comfortable and it'd be a good vibe? No, right, you don't got little funny lights or you know, whatever the heck you got going on, right? But they're not serious. In the same way, are you serious about making money? Okay, when I go out, I'm serious about it. I'm serious about meeting someone. I'm anticipating to meet someone. When I go to launch a product, I'm serious about it. I'm, I'm in the present moment and enjoying the process itself, but I'm as results oriented as it gets as well. It's both in Temple Street and from Outcome. So now you have an amplifying intention. So now you're sitting here and you're looking at the money that you have and you're looking at, at whether or not it can support the lifestyle that it is that you're building and it's simply no longer acceptable to you. So before your lifestyle, the amount of money that you were making was acceptable to you, now it's not. So you've got to begin to make that unacceptable to yourself. You've got to start to get a taste for better things. 
Um, this is a major reason I lived in LA, because I want to be around a higher standard. I want things to be more expensive. People say to me like, oh, and like, you know, you used to pay 80 grand a month in rent. I didn't even own that house, right? Why do you pay 80 grand a month in rent? Because I want to be around neighbors that pay 80 grand a month in rent. I want to normalize that in my mind because by normalizing that, my brain unconsciously is forced to find ways to support that structure. So when I first was paying 80 grand a month in rent, that was actually a little bit hard, but then later it became easier, 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 easier until that became normalized. I want you to think about how to normalize doing amazing shit. And a lot of this is gonna happen by your unconscious, right? It's like throwing yourself into social interaction, you just come up with what to say, but if you hesitate, you won't. You're like, what do I say, what do I say? Throw yourself in and find out. Great tip, by the way, just throw yourself in. Throw yourself in, your brain will produce it. Get a taste for the good life, your brain will produce it. Likewise, if you live in LA, go to Rodeo Drive. Try in a $10,000 jacket. Try in an expensive diamond watch. Try driving a Lambo like as a test drive or whatever, right? It can be a little hard to test drive sometimes. But you see the point, right? Like go experience those things. You start to get a taste for it. Your brain will start creating it for you. Then what you'll do is you'll go through a standard process of building wealth, which you're probably aware of, which is like, you know, audits of what you're, we'll make a whole other video about this, but, is, but the short version is audits of your strong suits, audits of your unfair advantages, looking at how you're utilizing your time, finding ways to get multiple ROIs from it, building systems around it, and that just also becomes normal, and that becomes the standard, okay? It's the same people that date people that they're not that attracted to, and that just becomes a standard. You've gotta actually raise your standards, make it normal, and then your unconscious mind will find ways to support that exact structure, okay? So, this is what I wanna kinda of get at here, is getting a taste for wealth, getting a taste for the good life, actually wanting it and then seeing if your brain will support it. And then what you're gonna do is once you've knocked down all the local things that you're doing for free, hopefully you're beginning to make some more cash and then you've gotta get bigger and bigger bucket list items that you want to knock down. And so what I want you to do is I want you to become an expert at spending money. What would you do with the money if you got it? So this is the first thing that I do. So for example, whenever I'm gonna go make some money, I say to myself, how much money do I wanna make? Okay, so I pick a number. This is what I wanna make. Then what I do is I say, what am I gonna spend the money on? What am, I gonna, what am I gonna blow the money on? And what I basically will do is I will pick um, some things that are for the business, you know, where am I gonna sink it back in the business and invest it you know, be responsible. Then I think about things that are for legacy to make things better for other people. And then what I do now that I'm older, I'm smarter about this, is I think about things that I'm gonna do with it selfishly. Things that are genuinely fun. And what this does is it's kind of hitting you from a higher self-motivation of helping the world, a day-to-day -day motivation of pragmatic things that you're doing to build up your financial situation, but also, Something just for yourself. Something just for you. So it, it's hitting into many, many, many different layers of motivation. And then what I'd recommend that you do is look at, what's gonna, look at what life would be like if you didn't get it and how incredibly frustrating that is if you don't get the thing that it is that you want, okay? So now what you've, do, what you've done is you've got yourself kind of jacked into this and now you're actively looking for answers. So see, now you're not just some bullshitter who's like, I wanna make money. It's like, no, you're, you're in it for real. You're in it for keeps because you like the good life you have these goals, there's things that you wanna do, and you're not dicking around. Now, what you're then gonna see is you're gonna watch how the deployment of your time, energy, and focus capital will begin to shift. So, what's gonna happen is you've got your group of friends, your knucklehead friends, and they're great, and you love them, and you'll always love them. But you'll notice that the vast majority of your friends are caught in this weird derp loop where what they're, what they're focusing on is never gonna actually lead them to the promised land. And I'm gonna create a subtlety for you here that might blow your mind, okay? This is a subtlety that will blow your fucking mind. Get ready for a subtlety, okay? Things like marijuana, things like the Kardashians are not actually good. They resonate at a specific level of consciousness specifically because they will waste your time. They feel good because they waste your time. In other words, somebody who's at a different level of consciousness, 
who sees the world in a different way would look at a TikTok or Kim Kardashian or smoking drugs and feel a repulsion from it at a non-resonance. Even if you smoked the drugs and you felt like some euphoria, they would just feel the time being burned away from what they truly resonate with. It's a, it's, it's a non-resonant. Non, it's just non-resonant. You don't resonate with it. At, at a core level, you don't resonate with it. So what do I mean by resonate? Like, like think of like what is true to your soul. And not what you say is true to your soul, but look at your actual results. What, what your actual results are is what's true to your soul. The thing that is going to feed that and enable it will feel, will have a certain resonance with you and it holds you there, okay? The thing that's burning your time is seductive. How can you tell that this is the thing? How do you know? You can have a friend or yourself, I really mean you by the way, but we'll say your friend, wink wink, your friend. And if you talk about things that piss them off, they'll spend hours talking about that. You talk about their ex or their boss or their coworker or their current spouse or whatever, piss them off. Hours they will spend on this shit. But you go to pick up a book that would advance their lives, they will look at that for, you'd be lucky to get five minutes. Hey, look at this book that's gonna completely change your life. They're gonna look at it for five minutes. You show them like a powerful marketing book, maybe, simple example, you bring them a $100 million offers by Alex Ramosi, simple, simple marketing book that everybody should have read. Like, if you haven't read that, like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> what planet do you live on? So, like, and that's, that's a simple one, scratching a huge surface here. So, like the, the, the top of a tremendous rabbit hole. So you say, hey, look at this $100 million offers book. Oh yeah, um, oh cool. Anyway, let me keep complaining about my ex. Anyway, let me keep complaining about my boss. Anyway, let me keep complaining about my roommate. And they'll keep, it's resonant with them, you see this? Or maybe you say to them, hey, um, let's spend the weekend in, in, like just say that you're here in LA, Big Bear. You know, Big Bear is not, it's certainly not Aspen, it's certainly not Vail, certainly not Jackson Hole, but I think Big Bear, it's only two and a half hours away. It's pretty fucking cool. Now, why'd I pick, why'd I pick Big Bear? Why didn't I pick um, going to Aspen as an example? I'm picking Big Bear because Big Bear is a two hour drive from LA. Like if I leave right now from my house, I can be at Big Bear in two hours from now. Big Bear is about a 70% as good version of Aspen to some extent. I'm, it kind of depends what you're, what you're focused on. But as far as being in a mountain, Beautiful snow, Christmas-like, North, North Pole Christmas-like environment, like, like it's Santa Planet, refreshing, beautiful fresh air, beautiful lake, Big Bear Lake's beautiful. You can be there in two hours. And, and it's really only one hour up the fucking highway and then it's one hour up the mountain. So it's, it's really like an hour because then you're driving up the mountain, which is super beautiful and cool. Big Bear, likewise Malibu, out here, which is in the other direction towards the ocean. Cool thing in LA, you could be skiing in the beach in the same day. Big Bear or Malibu, is an hour to two hours away in physical time and energy, but is infinitely away in someone's soul. They cannot resonate with it. I have a very good friend who I'm gonna push this video over to. And I said to him, okay, he, he, he makes really good money. He has one client paying about 65K a month. And he's got a couple other clients and paying him like 10K, 20K, 30K here or there. But I said to him, come with me to, to Big Bear. But he's busy. I said, you need to come with me to Big Bear because he's, he's dealing with a lot of pain and he's had like, a lot of like, um, you know, business issues and stuff and he's been really mad about them and whatnot. I said, look, just come with me to Big Bear. The answer is Big Bear. You know, now what do I look like? I look like I'm some fucking like, just ski, bro. Yeah, bro, the answer is skiing, right? You ever read the old Neil Strauss book where they said Owen thinks that game is a solution to even curing cancer? And I read that, I was like, that's fucking true. But, you know, I, I remember back in the day there'd be like a little bit of drama at the crib at Project Hollywood. And I was, like, I was like, guys, let's just go out. Like, fuck all this drama shit. Let's go out. Like, why are we here? Why are we at Project Hollywood? Let's just go out. I don't care about this. The answer is going out. But it's not about the going out or there's a cure for cancer. It's that it's fun and you raise the fucking vibe. You're, you're reminded of why you're in it in the first place. That's why you're in this. You didn't move to LA to sit there arguing in the house. You moved to LA to go out. So I would always be saying like, yo, like let's actually just go out. That's the solution. So same as I said to my buddy, let's go to Big Bear. Of course he couldn't do it. My friend would not be able to go to Big Bear until 
he would raise his vibe. It's non-resonant. He would go there, the people that he's mad at, the mountains would make that drown out. The frustrations that he has in his business and the grievances, the skiing would drown that out. It's, it's non-resonant. He wouldn't be able to do it. And let me tell you what would happen if you took him to Big Bear. He would begin to complain and complain. He didn't do it, by the way, but, he, but I promise you, he would begin to complain and complain and complain until he left. How do I know this? I had a similar experience when I went to the Nepali coast in Hawaii. I was in a very negative loop at that point in my life. I went to the Nepali coast in Hawaii where there's no cell phones, no work, beautiful mountains. Look it up. See if you can find uh, some images of Nepali coast, okay? So anyway, so I'm sitting there and I uh, just type in Nepali coast in Google images is all you got to do. So have a look at like Nepali coast right here. Are you able to load that up? Load up the images? Okay, Nepali coast is right there. Images. Let's see some images. Just on images, just real simple images. Yeah, no complicated stuff, just images. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so have a look at that, okay? That's this on the screen right now? Okay, so just like real chill. That's Nepali Coast, okay? One of the most beautiful places in the world. I like to hike in there. It's about 11 hike, mile hike in, 11 mile hike out. Um, you know, I've done the boating there. Um, I've uh, boated it, I've hiked it, all this kind of stuff. It's uh, pretty dangerous, but like totally, totally, totally amazing. So from that standpoint, uh, I went into Nepali Coast once. And I was kind of like in a low vibe and I found that I just could, I, I, it was weird, but like my complaints about work and coworkers and challenges began to amplify and I got more mad. I got more mad. I got more mad. I got more mad. I got so angry. I wound up leaving from that hike a couple days early and I stormed home along this very dangerous cliff because that's a very dangerous hike that kills people every year. And I, I hiked back on that brutal, brutal, psychotically dangerous hike. Um, manageable hike, but dangerous and certainly not in a bad state of mind, on minimal sleep, angry, and I shit you not, that was the one time in my life I started talking like I was fucking demon possessed. I had so much spooling anger that I started, and th this was well over a decade ago, I started talking the most crazy shit like out of a fucking exorcism. I've had exes that have borderline personality disorder, who I love dearly, by the way, I love them to death, but... And by them, I mean that quite literally. It's almost like multiple personalities. But, you know, I love them to death. And I've seen them go in, in similar vibes as that. And I saw myself go into that same super, super dark vibe because that negative energy that I was hooked into wasn't getting a fix and forcibly got me off that mountain. Point being, you think that you're going to get rich. You think that you're going to bank all these dollar, dollar bills, y'all. When you're dealing with that same thing, look, I was in the promised land. I was in Nepali Coast. What do you make all the damn money for to go to Nepali Coast and hike? Like, what's even the point of making it? I had some money at that point. But I wasn't getting what I resonated with, and I went off the fucking trail. In the same way, you'll go to read that $100 million offers by Alex Ramosi, which, like, I bet you 99% of people watching this have, like, heard of it but not read it or read only a part of it. But meanwhile, you're, if you look at your screen time on your phone, you pull up screen time on your phone, and it's, like, nine hours a day of fucking screen time but you haven't read the Alex Ramosi book yet because it's non-resonant. And, and, and all these like cool videos online are great, but they're burning down your time. They're, it's, it's a non-resonant thing. Maybe you smoked weed, but you didn't you know, do some other thing that would help you and so on and so forth. So you have to understand, these things are resonant specifically because they hold you in your place. You almost want to think of it like God is calling you home back to heaven and you're hiding from God and you're using these different addictions to hide from God. And you almost want to think of it like heroin or cocaine or crack or whatever, meth, fentanyl, whatever the crazy thing of the day is. You want to think of those as like a far end of the continuum of things like internet surfing, workaholism, gossiping, talking shit, complaining, anything where rather than seeing the, the rather than allowing that light to come inside of yourself, like letting in that light it will give you sort of a sunglasses against the light. So what I'm saying to you that I want you to go out and do these beautiful things, I'm trying to get a little bit of light down your damn throat so that you can begin to resonate with better things because I've seen it in myself, I've seen it in my clients, I've seen it in my friends. You know, I have one buddy, same guy with the Big Bear thing, one of my best friends, um, like a brother to me. I remember I said to him, uh, come to Big Bear, he couldn't do it. But he would be so angry about people who had let him down 
that he would loop on these things. And he, he had been definitely coming out of it in a major way. But for a long time, you'd see him looping on these things. Looping and looping and looping on these things. And remember that, he, that I'm on the other end of the phone. Mr. I did a hundred, over 100 million in sales by using my fucking mouth. Bro, bro, bro. I can help you to make millions of dollars. Everyone around me made millions of dollars. I'm on the phone with you. Do you want to talk about this? Or do you want to talk about millions of dollars? Take your pick. But it was non-resonant. So what I did when I hung out with them was I kept cracking jokes, cracking jokes, cracking jokes, cracking jokes. And he's like, bro, like you've gone kind of, like since I've been hanging out with you, like, like, cause I hadn't seen him in a minute. He's like, yo, like ever since like, cause I hadn't seen him a ton since before COVID. He's like, bro, like you've gone like full fucking retard. And I'm like, full retard, full retard, full retard, full retard. And he's like, bro, like this is too much. Like this is literally, this is too much retard even for me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. And I just kept cracking jokes around him in, instinctively for hours a day. And then I begged him and pleaded with him, come to fucking Big Bear. Not Vail, not Jacksonville, not Aspen, not Alaska, not Hawaii, nothing that times to me. We're gonna leave at noon. We're gonna drive up the road. We're gonna have a great day. We're gonna sleep, we're gonna do a little night skiing. We're gonna sleep there, catch a little skiing and drive back. Now he's too busy to do it. Now talk to him. I guarantee you what he's gonna tell you is I was too busy. Too busy, couldn't do it. Just like you're too busy. Just like you. You're also too busy. You can't go to Griffith Observatory. You can't go to the Getty. You can't go to Santa Monica. You can't go to Catalina Island. You're too busy. You're too busy. Me, 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 me. I get it. I was the same. I talked about this last video. I get it. Been there, done that. I got the motherfucking t-shirt. I got the mug. I got the t-shirt, the mug. I got the fucking trucker hat of the shit, okay? Too busy, da, 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 da. I get it. I understand, okay? Every year, I go to World Summit in Vegas. Every year, I'd say, I'm gonna go see the Grand Canyon. There's helicopters, they're $280. But I was too busy in meetings, in seminar, in this, in that, in the other fucking thing to just take a fucking helicopter, go see the fucking Grand Canyon. Didn't make the time to do it. But hey, I got time for all this other shit. Just think of the sheer volume of dumb shit that you've wasted your time on. So see, we can say to ourselves, okay, look, here's the deal. You're not rich. We're gonna study how to get rich and then you're gonna go do it. But the problem is with that is you've already tried it and it didn't work. And uh, hey, look, maybe that's not gonna work either. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just throwing a little mud in the wall for you. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But what I believe is that we could only take in so much light. Like it, it's almost as though, and don't do this ever, horrible example, but best I got. Imagine, again, never ever do this. But imagine if you're only able to look at the light, say the sun, with, again, never look at the sun without your sunglasses. It'll fucking burn your corneas. I'm, I'm hesitant to even say this. But say that you could look at the sun without the sunglasses, but you need layers of sunglasses to let in the light. Complaining and all this bullshit is because you can't let the light in. So the ways that you learn to let in the light is by resonating with it. Force yourself to go do that fun thing. Recognize, recognize A, that you don't even have the mental focus to spend two hours planning your year. B, that your life is too busy that you can't even logistically handle it. C, that once you get there, you're miserable. And D, that you have to ultimately resonate with it. And practice. Go to do cool things and practice. And shift it to where you actually resonate with awesome shit. Starve out the synaptic superhighways in your brain or the energetic, like the energy body of trauma and negativity and fucking Satan and, and starve that shit out and then get it to where you begin to resonate with awesome shit, okay? So then as that's happening and you're resonating with awesome shit, now your brain kicks in and just like that kid that became like a super goth, we didn't start as a super goth. Maybe he just listened to Nine Inch Nails or Smashing Pumpkins. And then he got like a shirt from Hot Topic and then fast forward three years, he's covered in tats, super goth. You are leading into what's called being a rich guy. And now the, look, look, the power of your unconscious brain, you have no idea. And your brain can find ways, particularly if you look up the resources, your brain can find ways to be rich. See, now all of a sudden, here's what happens. You're like, you know, instead of scroll, instead of doom scrolling, maybe I want to read a little bit of $100 million offers. 
wow, it's like crack cocaine reading Alex Ramosi. Maybe I read a little John Carlton, kick-ass copywriting secrets of a marketing rebel. Maybe I'm going to get on the Dan Kennedy newsletter. Maybe I'm going to go look at www.blueprintreloaded.com and learn all of Owen's marketing tricks that he used to do over $100 million in sales from a small, modest YouTube channel. And maybe when he does the, maybe I'd rather, instead of doom scrolling, I'd rather actually go inside Blueprint Reloaded. I'd actually get inside the group of the, of the screened and vetted small group and do coaching every day with people that are serious about going to fucking promised land. Ah, slide in there right now, okay? Hop in there. It, like, again, highest act that you could do right now to show me that you're serious, get inside Blueprint Reloaded. Find a way to make it happen. Oh, can't find a way. Oh, just like the big bird, can't find a way. Cool, bro, cool. You can find a fucking way. Okay, in the same way that my buddy had days at a time to waste on some dumb shit, but couldn't make it a big bear, you've got gazillion dollars to waste on some dumb shit, but can't figure out an inexpensive program like Blueprint Decoded. Loaded, best deal you'd ever get on anything. Get inside Blueprint Reloaded. Get inside, <laughs> okay? Come inside, as they say on adult website. Come inside, click, okay? Come inside, baby. I'm waiting. <laughs> Little ginger leprechauns waiting for you inside. Hey, okay, I'm waiting for you inside the Blueprint Reloaded. Hello, ready to go to the promised land, okay? I'm here for your results. And I'm prepping you right here in this. So again, like, look, if I can get you winning, maybe I could get you resonating with doing a program with me. But you've got to actually resonate with it. But see, the funny thing is, <clears throat> Blueprint Reloaded and programs like it are so high vibe and so high paradigm that they're really only built for people who actually want to live inside of an awesome life. If you actually resonate with awesome shit, I wouldn't even have had to convince you over many videos to get inside Blueprint. But it's only because your brain hasn't been thinking about these higher paradigms that you're not there yet. By the way, side point, little, little side point for you here, okay? Guys like Tony Robbins or guys like myself, part of our marketing shtick is that we know what a low paradigm of consciousness and energetic resonance is. The seminar or the videos, rate, million dollar point here, raise your paradigm to where, where you begin to resonate higher and because there's not a lot of things out there that are high resonance because the world's mostly filled with garbage, all we have to do as salespeople is put you into a high resonance state, put something super high vibe that will help your life and expand it in front of you from that state and you'll naturally want it, okay? It would be like if you got really, really, really hungry and putting a pizza in front of you. But we have to create a hunger for real success. So actually teaching success is not as easy as it would look, but, it, but also quite easy in other ways, if you know what you're doing. Because basically what you're doing is that you're, you're like people are like, oh, everyone wants to like learn about making cash or dating or whatever. That's like an easy market. Like, no, it's not. Most people don't want their own success. Look around, are you fucking stupid? I mean, think of all the friends that I have, like my derper friends from back in the day that I love to death, like brothers to me, who would see me crushing it in dating. And then I'd say, well, here, let me help you. And I would have done it for free because I grew up with these guys and they won't come out. That's like, that's, the, that's like the classic story in personal growth. Like I got mega rich, moved into mansion and my friends don't want to learn from me. Oh, I learned all this dating stuff and my friends don't want to learn from me. They're in that lower resonance and you're resonating higher and that's why often they tell you to ditch your old friends. I don't think that you need to do that. I've done in some cases feel bad about it, but the point being is you've got to be resonating at that higher point, right? So, so much of this is like, you know, trauma release, laughing more, getting around higher vibes, like kind of forcing it, right? So that's what I was trying to do with my buddy. And just I basically I saw him on a low vibe. I hadn't seen him a long time, but also he'd improved a lot too um, in tremendous ways as well. So I could see he was kind of ascending. And so what I did was I, I could see like before he was like super low vibe, super low vibe. We would talk on the phone. I try to get him out of it, but he's kind of looping, right? But I love this guy. So I'm trying to get him out of it. I couldn't do it. So then what I saw was I was like, wait, he's coming out of it. He was kind of improving. Like, like he was op his mind was opening up. You know, he, he caught a little bit of luck too. Sometimes you need a little bit of luck if you're struggling, right? And he was kind of having a hard time. So he caught a couple, he caught a little bit of good luck. So he's kind of ascending. So then what happened was I was like, I get him here, get him laughing, 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 laughing. He's like, bro, this is like getting crazy. But I'm just, I'm literally trying to like, sage the demons so he can be so he can be helped then what happened was i'm like yo we got to go into the outdoors but i wasn't able to get him over the hump for it right now if you were to talk to him he'd probably tell you owen this is like really cool in theory i get what you're saying i understand bro i got bills to pay i got kids i wasn't able to make it in that particular day and i get it okay like it's not like i'm not going to try to be like so extreme like Anyone that won't come to Big Bear with me is low vibration. I'm not trying to say that. But what I'm saying is, and you will see this, you yourself will always have an excuse, 
but meanwhile will burn tons of time on bullshit. Your friends will always have an excuse and burn tons of time on fucking bullshit. And it's just endless. So see, that in many ways, and I talked about this in the previous video, where I decided to just kind of go live out my bucket list, that was what I began to see in myself because um, the example that I gave there where I talked about how I, I began doing trips even, even when my business was hurting, I just said fuck it and started doing trips. What in effect happened was, um, I remember I did my first trip and I, I loved it so much but I didn't do my second trip for like, it was maybe four or five months after or something because every single week I had a new excuse why I couldn't go. There was a new excuse why, so I, I went to Grand Canyon for my first trip. And my second trip I wound up doing out in uh, uh, Arches National Park, Bryce Canyon, and Zion. And my goal from there was to go to uh, Big Sur in California, which is this beautiful coast in PCH. And what happened was, uh, I told my friend Shane, oh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna go. But I, but I could literally pull this out, like I have phone records of this in my WhatsApp. You literally see this record of every single week that I couldn't go. Now. This is not for the faint of heart, and I don't recommend this for the average person because um, I just think it's a little bit irresponsible, but it definitely worked for me. So again, I don't want to like, you know, cause you to implode your life or anything. Like I don't, I don't, don't go doing this on a hope and a prayer, but I was at a point where I had enough business skill set that I could sort of take the risk on this. So it kind of depends where you're at, kind of like an advanced tactic. But what I did was I said, fuck it. I'm going to forcibly go on that trip. And I wound up doing it. And I had a lot of fun. I got in a higher vibe, but I came back about 80,000 behind on my, uh, they call that payroll in the business, right? So I came back because I wasn't operating the business and it was during COVID where a lot of my systems had broken down. So it suddenly went from being like a whole machine to being more reliant on me. Um, I came back about 80K behind, but here's, was the best, here's the best part. I made up that 80K in like three or four days, quick. And the reason why I was able to do that was because suddenly I was taking on the identity of someone who likes to travel and my mind gave me the solution finally. My mind allowed my reticular activation system, my RAS, to see the solution because of it. Look, in a lot of ways, here's what you're not realizing, okay? A program like this, again, www.blueprintreloaded.com, that's me trying to get you to put down maybe the price of like a fancy lunch or dinner, literally the amount of money that my niece can make babysitting I'm trying to get you to put that down to begin to shift your identity from a discretionary spending money burner who burns money on stuff that goes in land of lost socks to someone who's a self-investor. If I can shift you to become a self-investor, I can begin to make that shift in you and other changes will go from that catalyst. That's why getting inside Blueprint Reloaded is a catalyst. That's what I'm trying to get you to do, okay? If I can get you to do that. So if I can get you in here, this can be a catalyst because you start changing your identity. I have watched people go into programs like this that have massive identity level change. Content's amazing, support system is amazing, com community's amazing, getting feedback's amazing, personal feedback's invaluable. But what I see is a catalyst to where it shifts them at a vibration level and shifts them at an identity level, and then they start completely changing <clears throat> their fucking lives, okay? I've really, really, really seen this. Like a goth who gets like their first little tattoo and their little Hot Topic shirt and then becomes a full goth. Like getting this is like that first little goth tattoo setting you on your way to perhaps getting very rich or something like that. Depends if you utilize it, everyone gets a different result. So that thing of raising your vibe, again, we build that by recognizing you say that you wanna be rich, you say that you wanna be successful, but you already have billions in infrastructure around you. Like Big Bear, what did that cost, whether it's the state of California or the federal government or whoever the fuck built all that stuff to build that for you? Kings and queens didn't have that 300 years ago. You could literally, you could literally drive in your mechanical metal transporter down the highway, millions upon millions in infrastructure, up a fucking mountain, up a mountain, like a king or queen a couple hundred years ago didn't have that, on your fucking cell phone, your 5G <laughs> fucked up cell phone, to looking at videos the whole time if you want, up into the mountain, entire ski hills created, and you know, for the price of like a cheap day pass or an icon pass, which you get a whole year for like a thousand bucks, ski the whole, almost like half the damn country on that I-K-O-N-P-A-S-S -S or Epic Pass, icon pass and Epic Pass, like ski half the country off one and ski half the country on the other one, switch them up year to year. You're, blast, you're, you're, you're being carted up a, 
a fucking uh, snow mountain. <laughs> You're just blasting down it with a ski rental. Beautiful fresh mountain air. Looking at looking at Big Bear Lake. You know, up and up like having like a mug of hot chocolate or apple cider in front of a fire in a wood cabin. And you can do that for the price of fuck all. If you can't even afford it, if you can't afford to do that, you could go with a big group of friends. You, you, could, you could help a rich person and they could bring you up. You could, you could find someone who would bring you up in exchange for you bringing them a bunch of like people to date because you're really good at cold approach. There's so many outside the box ways that you could do this if you're creative about it. So go do that. Get a taste for things being better and get a, get a taste for things being awesome. Um, and then what happens is now you actually want that and you're not bullshitting, you're serious about it, but you resonate with it. And so now what happens? You, like I said, you pick up that marketing book and you want to read it. Maybe you watch a, a deeper, more intense program. But like, if you don't resonate with this, you can't watch it because it will get you success. Right now, that sounds like some crazy shit, but like, if you don't resonate with it, you can't, but if you resonate with success, you can watch my program. But stop and think about this. An 80 hour program, if you resonate with success and this is no fluff, not ramble, not fluff, not, not disheveled videos, but all sequence in a row with half a decade of work into it, of course, if you value your time, you'd rather be in there or on a proper in-person training or doing the calls and being part of the group than looking at fucking internet or trying to get another free video. Like, I got so much value just from those free videos, right? You'd value your time and you'd want the, the fastest way to get there. So that's kind of what I'm getting. Uh, so I'm a little all over the place here, but like that's what I'm trying to get. Like, like again, in this program, I'm not all over the place. It's like years of iteration and the best seminar that I've ever done, perfectly done. But if you just want to see what's the latest YouTube video that other people are commenting on, like, because this is a little harder to watch because you don't see this big thing of comments. It's not the new video on YouTube. This is like the classic shit, right? It's like, would you rather watch the Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather boxing match because you just want to see what's popular and cool? Or would you rather go watch the old Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman? Like, do you want to see the real proper thing that will ch imprint itself on your soul? Or do you just want to see what's trendy and popular and a stimulus and a shiny object at the time? People that are stuck in the derper matrix and just want the, the latest TikTok, the latest shiny object, the latest weed, the latest gossip, the latest whatever. It's just whatever's put in front of their face. They're like a fucking whore that just every hole is being penetrated. There's no boundary there. Somebody who actually wants advancement, suddenly that 80 hours seems like no time at all. You watch, eight, you, I don't remember exactly how many hours. It was fucking huge. I should find the exact amount of hours. But that's no time at all. Being part of the groups is no time at all because you resonate with moving forward. Maybe you get home from a brutal, brutal job and you're thinking about what your, your first side hustle is gonna be. And you become obsessed, you love it, you're obsessed with it. Maybe you're learning about building funnels in internet marketing. Maybe you're learning about crypto or like whatever is the latest thing. But you become obsessed with it because you actually fucking want it. And that was sort of what I was saying to my buddy with Big Bear and with laughing and so on and so forth. I'm like, bro, you're already a genius. You're, you're already top 0.1% of intelligence. You've got an incredible work ethic when you actually give a fuck to use it. You're maybe the best in the world at what you do. Guys are paying you um, six figures a year, well into six figures a year for what it is that you're doing. You're incredible. So what's the fucking problem? The, the knowledge is all there. Fuck all this other shit. Remember a video that I made where I just said, fuck everything, just do the thing that works? And so that was my goal is, is get him resonating with, with that. And you know what? Since him and I hung out, while I believe that he has a lot more left in the tank and a lot more ascension in him, we saw some really, really serious improvement from it. And he said, this is a really cool experience. I got a cool experience. I'm really, really happy about that. He taught me a lot of stuff too. So it's reciprocated because he's so smart. I got so much reciprocated back. Um, but I got to get him out to some trips. I got to get him into nature. I got to get him back laughing again. And that's up to him if he wants to or not. But that's where I want to get him. I want to get him resonating with his own wins. And then once we do that, then I'll know that when we hang out, he's gonna be, this is what it's gonna be like. Owen, how do you shoot that video? Owen, how are you doing live broadcasts? Owen, how are you doing all this money just from simple little, not even that high viewed live broadcasts? <clears throat> Owen, how did you assemble that seminar? Owen, tell me your latest tricks of public speaking. Owen, what's your latest spiritual epiphany and all these crazy backlog videos that you did all over the country? Owen, show me the latest technology. Owen, introduce me your best connection. Like it's gonna, it's gonna get like, it's gonna get off the bullshit and on to that, and you'll see it. 
And then it's not this big grind. It's not this, it's not this big fucking effort. It's like you resonate with it now. Then maybe something comes into your field of awareness, some kind of opportunity, and you, you're like, oh, you start to actually resonate with it because you actually want it. Look, it's the same thing in social skills. Like again, what I say, a guy says, oh, I want, I want social result. I want a dating life. Doesn't have a condom. Social media sucks. The house isn't good back at the crib. You can tell he's not planning to win. He's not really planning to win. He just wants to go through the motions forever and use going out and socializing the same way that people use weed or TV or talking about some better future that's never going to actually happen. And this is what you're gonna see is that some people are like full on shark closers and some people are just pretenders, okay? You, you, you have uh, uh, prospects and suspects. And you can see the people, like there's people that go out and are real closers and whatever it is that they go to do in life, like you put them in a room Maybe they're doing a presentation. They're coming out with every penny in that room. You put them in a social environment, they're gonna have, they're gonna have dates lined up for a month, running off with someone that night. You know, you, you, you put them in, a, uh, in an environment to have fun, they're laughing, they're getting the value, they're getting the ROI. You put them on a trip, they're ah, oh, they're taking it in, right? Like they're doing the actual thing that they're supposed to do in that environment because they resonate with it and because they're playing for keeps. And that's what I've always thought, even with my social skills and areas that I'm strong, I'm like, I don't even feel that my skill set is that high. I just feel that I'm actually playing for keeps and I'm actually results oriented, which ironically, I'm always saying it's about the process. But when you fully engage the process, it's how you get the result. It's, it's, it's like a Zen archery when you're truly in the moment about the process and you hit the bullseye. You know, when you're Kobe Bryant in the flow, you score 81 points. Just totally engage in the flow itself because you're serious. But when you're that kind of person, you become a fuck, you just become a raging fucking shark. And it's funny because I'm always talking about the process, the process, the process. <clears throat> but some of my favorite books are books like Relentless by Timothy S. Grover or Winning by Timothy S. Grover, all about getting the result no matter what. And people will say to me, they'll say, Owen, I'm not like you about the process or going to a park or going skiing. I'm about the money. But then I'm like, but I make more money than you. Or they're like, Owen, oh, I'm not about going to the club to have fun. I'm about, you know, I kind of just lay back like a sniper, metaphorical, by the way, metaphorical, sniper. not real sniper, metaphorical. And then when I see the person I want, then I will go talk to them, but I don't want to have fun. But then I'm like, yeah, but I never see you dating anyone that I'm that impressed by. Like, it's like they align philosophically with like their results oriented, but then they don't even have the results. But if you just started to resonate with like having fun, then you'd start dating that person. If you start resonating with like doing the ski trip, then you'd start making the money to do more ski trips. Then you'd, then you'd say, well, how do I make enough money that I could go skiing the entire winter? Oh shit, I wanna ski the whole winter. And you start backwards engineering. How do I go do that? Look, same as if you get richer friends, your brain starts backwards engineering how to get to that standard. But if you're around a bunch of poor people, then you're like, well, backwards engineer how to get to that standard. Take me with cardio, right? I'm into hiking. I've been working on my cardio this month. What if I got around people that are smashing hikes? Well, I'm like, man, I, go, I gotta get up to their level. So get around higher vibes so that you can create finances that would support you being in that higher vibe. Enjoy the finer things in life and take the free stuff that billions of infrastructure was given to you. Hey, you owe the debt on it, national debt, right? So take that, it's the most expensive gym membership ever. Take that and go enjoy it. So you say, no, I wanna go do more of this. You see where I'm going with this? Show me that you actually want it. And that is when you become a shark. You know, like, like damn, like that person, it's, it's like Timothy S. Grover, uh, cooler, closer, and, cl and cleaner. Like that person that gets the result no matter what, that person like pulls off a miracle and will always win. That's how you become that person that always wins because you resonate. Like you ever have it where you're going out socializing and it just seems like every single night you're just killing it and like off on a new adventure with somebody else and just goes on for months and you're like, how am I on a streak like this? I'm just winning and winning. It's amazing. Win-win, all consensual win-win. And what happens is you've just expected to win. That's become the new standard. That's just how it is now is just winning. It's just winning and winning and winning because you resonate with winning. And so that's why I wanna bring you back to the original idea here, which is that you've got to begin to kick off that cycle of resonating with winning, not resonating in the core level with complaining. It's like, it's energizing you. Like, like, look at what gives you elation and focus 
and then look at what causes you to wilt and you can't even look at, that will show you where you're at and then begin to gradually shift the tides. And you're not gonna shift boom like in one day like that. I mean, maybe you could, maybe you could, who knows. But I think for most of us, it's a gradual process. But this video here is meant to put a little seedling to begin that process. This right here, www.blueprintreloaded, is meant again to show you all the techniques and exercises and all those hardcore OG concepts and showing you how to get there as well. Literally just jumping in here right now is gonna change your life and is gonna set this ball in motion. Get inside here. And what I hope for you is to truly change your life. So I'm looking forward to see you inside of the Blueprint Reloaded. Thank you for making it this far through the video. If you did, I think you're somebody who cares about your own success. We'll be back with more further down the rabbit hole. Love you very much. See you soon. Peace.